watching Bro Paulino TV. Good morning to all my viewers and I would like to share about the 1972 martial law uh, so that everybody will have an understanding of it and since we are in uh, 2021 even though it was uh, far beyond our history but so that everybody will know I would like to share this uh, story from the mouth of uh, former senator uh, in Rally. okay to begin with 1972 martial law much of what had been said against the 1972 martial law was fiction president marcos became president of the country in 1965 the united states and the soviet union were locked in a bitter cold war and the communist ideology went on a rampage and set the world ablaze the philippines was not spared two insurgencies were organized in the country in 1968 the cppmp in luzon in the Moro National Liberation Front known as the MNLF in Mindanao. These insurgencies were on top of the ongoing Dato Mafalin, Dato Mampatilan, Dato Mabalao and Ilaga rebellions there. Beyond this were also the heavily armed political warlords in many parts of the country. Such was the status of the law and order in the land at the time. The CPP in P in the Moro National Revelation Liberation Front were organized by three young men, Benigno Ninoy Aquino, Normi Suare, and Jose Maria Hisison. These three were former students in the University of the Philippines. They were allegedly supported by a country in the East Asia that wanted to keep the Philippines busy. The AFP then, which included the Philippine Constabulary, was a military force of some 48,000 men and women. Its combat weapons were caliber 30 M1 Garand and caliber 30 M1 carbon rifles that the United States used in World War II. The CPPNP was armed with copies of caliber 7.62 mm US M14 rifles and the P-40 rocket launchers, mortals and other lethal explosive devices imported from the Red China. The MNLF was armed with modern European guns from Belgium. The CPP, NP, and MNLF recruitments were quick and extensive. The CPP, NP, for one, penetrated all sectors of society, youth, students, teachers, academy, colleges, universities, churches, professionals, and intellectual groups media, labor, farmers, fishermen, transport system, urban and rural poor. Both also targeted the military for recruitment. The NPE started its violence in Metro Manila and Central Luzon. Initially, its headquarters was in Hacienda Luisita in Tarlac. It built a labyrinth of underground tunnels in the town of Capas. It terrorized the countryside and murdered those that resisted it. During the national election in 1969, about August or September, the NPA or the New People's Army massacred 12 laborers in Barangay Santa Lucia outside of Clark Air Base. In 1970, while President Marcos was delivering his sona, in Congress, the CPP barricade, barricaded the old Congress building on Piburgos Street in Manila. It trapped President Marcos, his family, Sintor's congressman, 
cabinet members, Supreme Court justices, ambassadors, diplomats, other political and religious dignitaries, and leading business leaders inside Congress building. A day or after CPP elements stormed Malacanang, burned a hospital there, threatened the presidential residence. President Marcos had to evacuate his family to his presidential yak in Manila, in Manila Bay. With the help of various self-defense units that it organized in Central Luzon, the EFP was able to dislodge the NPE from there. It pushed them north to Isabela in the Cagayan Valley and from there the NPE spread to Region 4 in the south to the Bicol region, to the Visayas Islands and to Mindanao. Meanwhile, in Metro Manila, the communists continued their destructive work. First, they bombed the joint U.S. military advisory group known as the JUSMAG headquarters in Quezon City. They bombed the Liberal Party rally at Plaza Miranda during the political campaign in August 1971. Several people were killed. Many were injured. Senator Hubito Salonga, among others, suffered severe suffered severe wounds on different parts of his body he nearly became blind from 1970 to 1972 metropolitan manila suffered weekly bombing the communist insurgents bomb oil firms pipelines of the water utilities Mirar miralco electric power systems public and private buildings business structures public and private markets even even the u.s embassy was not spared so were the food terminal market the arca building the filipinas orient airways the court of industrial relations the philippine american life insurance company to mention some of many massive labor and transport strike were mounted the communists tried to isolate and paralyze Metro Manila. Islex and Enlex were not yet existent then. One of the transport strikes created a charpic jam that stretched from Los Baños in Laguna to Manila. The communists also captured UP Diliman in Quezon City. They established a communist commune there under Eric Son Bacolinao as chairman. For several weeks, UP Diliman was off limits. No one could go in and out of the place. Permission from the commune was required. UP President Salvador Lopez became a virtual prisoner in his university. One person was shot and killed in that incident. In 1972, Defense Minister General Maradin Pangabian of Indonesia was my official guest in Manila. When he observed what was going on in the country, he said in one of our conversation, you know, Johnny, what I noticed about your country reminds of what happened to us in Indonesia during the communist trouble there. Be careful. The final straw that struck the camel's back came from Nino Aquino himself. In August 1972, Nino asked me for an urgent meeting. I met him in Ordenita Village in Makati, in the house of Ramon C. Lay, our common friend, his brother Paul Lakino, was with him. He told me that he met leaders of the CPP and they discussed a coalition between the CPP and the Liberal Party should President Marcos declare martial law. I made a written report of that meeting to President Marcos when President Marcos informed the public about what I reported to him, Ninoy denied that he met me. President Marcos invited the Liberal Party leaders to the Malcanyang Pal leaders to Malcanyang for a meeting with him. But the Liberal Party leaders refused to attend. This incident made up the mind of President Marcos. History was made, he proclaimed martial law throughout the land. That is the end of the story based on the 
mouth testimony of former senator Kim Riley. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you very much and bye-bye.